Hey, what's up, guys? I'm to hear more. I'm Patrick Cloud. And this is Twerk Thong. I'm kidding. This is damn it, and that just can't. You know what? It, <laughs> I was like, yeah. <laughs> what it was, was what? I was like, I was getting dressed this morning, and I was grabbing a hoodies out the the closet, and I thought about like it's that moment where you lock eyes with a chick, and she's feeling you right before she dances with you, like she gives you the look, and I don't know why it just hit me like it was a flashback of this chick, and she was like, like I was like, hey, what's up? And she looked, and she smiled, and she did. Like chicks will do this right here, and then listen when a chick does the little jump, the kick. Look, look, you know y'all do y'all do this. They be like, yeah, boom, right, boom, and then they just grab one leg and lift it, right, one pant leg and lift it. You know you're about to get the best fucking twerk of your life, especially about if they throw smile back on that first, thing. they smile and look at you, kick the leg. And then raise that pant leg a little bit so they Ooh. can get, oh, my God, best twerk of your life. Now, adversely, if you're arguing with a young man <laughs> and he steps back and does the exact same thing, like lift that pant leg, you finna get socked the fuck you out. Beat up. Yeah, you, you about to get Be- socked out. The best beat up. <laughs> the best beat up of your life. Up. I like when uh, the top of the booty moves more than anything else. Mm. Like when you get twerked on and they do the thing where the top of the booty moves yeah. and you're just looking at it. I was on a music waves. video shoot once and there were these girls in the pool and they were making waves just by doing that. Really? Ooh, yeah. What are they? The talented. water. The water they are ads. effortlessly sensual and sexy. It's just women exude that shit, bro. I wish I could be sexier. I got to do some <laughs> stupid shit with my eyes and my eyebrows and bite my lip and shit like that. And the shit that we think is sexy look dumb as fuck. Like, Crazy. Like taking a picture with a rose in your mouth. Get that goddamn flower out or your mouth, the, boy. Who's, who's the nigga who was in, Um, they call him J.C. Penny. Oh, he was like, what you do if I walk past you? The nigga who went viral because... Why? First of all, niggas, stop doing that. What would you do if I walk past you? Oh, my God. They ate his ass up. bro, because he he made another video and he was dancing. Like, he was going crazy with the dancing. Yeah. I think he just... I think he just spooled. I think he trolling. Nah, I think he's really like that. That was some... If if he is trolling, though, that was some goddamn Lil Nas X-level trolling, boy. Because, you know, he did the thing where... He posted, thinking he was going to get one reaction. Then they ate him up in the comments. Then he did the thing where he doubles down on it, mm-hmm. saying, like, of course I, 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 I'm i getting ate up. I left it up. Like, saying that leaving it up is, like, the last part of control you have. Yeah. And then he got mad. He's like, man, because everybody in the comments was making fun of me. He's like, man, whatever. And then he put on, like, this the music? music and started dancing. I was like, yo, this dude is wild. I love it. I love. I, I hope it is a spoof because I love people that can laugh at themselves after the fact. Like it might not have went exactly how you hope, but mm-hmm. nigga, now you got the attention, and what you gonna do with it? And he is able to laugh it off. So it's crazy that that you can be that foolish, and the internet can eat you up, whatever. But mm-hmm. now he's just like known. Yeah. So he's either gonna be a meme and we move on, oh. or. He's gonna be on love and hip hop. Oh, nigga, you can that, really spin something like that to a real career. That 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 walk past is definitely gonna that that gif of him walking past is gonna be spread. That's gonna be used this year, right? But now, if I send you this, you already know I'm waiting for you to do something when I walk past or something like that's going to be a gift that we use. I can't wait. That's crazy. Nah, mm-hmm. I, I I would just beg anybody watching this. If you ever thought about doing a what would you do if I walked past you video, don't. <laughs> if it's on your phone, <laughs> delete it. That is a crazy form of content. What was some of the most cringeworthy videos for 2023? Do you remember any? Yeah, I actually just started following cringe pages. Oh, I gotta because do that. I didn't I didn't know that I liked them so much. Mm-hmm. There's a dude, and I think he's he's trolling, but there's a dude who's blowing up every cringe meme page because he's basically doing like regular interactions, but like skits, like of him meeting friends and like it'll be like text of like going into a party looking for the boys and then like boys see you and you're like, hey, and now we get lit. Like it's literally like him. It, they're saying he's cosplaying friendship. It's oh, like, I've seen it. It's that like guy. him yeah, okay, in yeah, yeah. class and it'll be like in class, bored, and then he's like, Oh, what can I do to make everybody laugh? And he says, says bruh, and does a T pose, and everybody's like, "Whoa, you're so cool! Come chill with us!" And he like <laughs> fake daps him up, and I was like, "This is the most entertaining, sad thing I've ever seen in my entire life." 
<laughs> and everybody was like, what's that? What's that? What's that? And none of the pages were posting it. And I, I just thought that was regular internet stuff. But I found his page. And he, like, dresses like Playboy Cardi. And is, like, doing all this crazy. Like, he's, it's almost like he's cool. And I was just like, is he a genius? Is he just faking all oh, of this? Because he plays it up. He play, he wears, like, Fortnite shirts and, like, shirts with wolves on it. Some like, people just play get it, up. man. And Some I'm people like, just get the internet. But what does that lead to? <laughs> There's so many people with like styles of content that don't really lead to anything. Mm-hmm. Like that but girl. Got a ton of followers. And, like, exactly. Like there's a views. there's this girl who's going crazy on TikTok because she films herself having interactions with servers and she's just like wildly disrespectful. So the oh, it's getting shared like crazy. But all the comments are like, how can somebody be like this? And they're just like, she's rude and stuff. But I'm just like, what's the end goal? Why would you make yourself look terrible for that? <laughs> Unless I mean the TikTok is paying, then whatever. But it just can, seems like I, so you I, I can't pivot. I don't pivot. like the rude shit at all. Right. I don't. I don't. I, I can't get with that one. Even as a troll, it's like I just. Ah. It's like I also would be super careful about that because people do stuff to your food, and that's a real. That's a real thing. If you're. Oh, I mean, I think when it when she was outed, they were saying that the places the the it was completely staged. Okay. Oh, oh I hate so that too. Then. So people, whoever was, she was talking to, like that, like I think um, she got like a. Um, the, the one that went crazy that I saw, she got uh, eggs Benedict, and the eggs kind of slid off of it for a little bit, and then she sent it back and was just talking crazy to the waiter, and then it said, mm. like, there this is a stage that's not really a waiter she's talking to. But in my mind, I'm like, why would you even... Cloud is such a destructive it's insane. drug, bro. You would ruin your own reputation for some clout forever, though. It's <laughs> such a because it like if one of your video really goes viral and like everybody that works at a restaurant recognizes your face when you just go and play, nah, nah, nah. Get the fuck up out of here with that goofy shit, bro. You can't, you can't come in here. We ain't rocking with you. There's Off a awful clout. If there's a really cool uh, group of people on the internet who do horror shorts on their page, like every single one of their pages is like a self shot horror sh- short. And I've been like watching those a lot, and that makes sense to me. If those go crazy and it, and they, the right people see it, you might mm-hmm. direct a horror film. If not, if you're just that is intention, yeah. There's intention, yeah, behind... super intention. And then if not, then people just watch your shit and you get paid for it yeah, by absolutely. ads. But there's just like a weird. It's almost like how Boom Gang used to do. Oh you used to just like God. rob people, and that was that was the everything. <laughs> so it's like there's no there's nowhere you can go. It's not like somebody's gonna watch you steal from a liquor store and be like, host the Oscars. <laughs> I got a job for you. <laughs> Although they might after so many people not hosting it. That's why I'm watching this JC Penny guy too, because it's like, man, as much as they ate him up, now mm. we know about him. So mm-hmm. this can this can go however y'all on Twitter make it go, because y- y'all just making people famous. <laughs> they, they, look, man, that shit be so crazy to me. Bad baby is still going crazy. She just bought like an eight million dollar house and flipped it, all from just cussing her mom out on Dr. <laughs> Phil. <laughs> She really, that seemed like somebody that was going to come and go, and she's still she's rich. She's still here. Did, wait, did she, she dropped the OnlyFans, though, didn't she? OnlyFans went crazy as soon as she turned 18. It was like the weirdest. That's weird. Yeah, it was like oh, groomers yeah. like are like, finally. Anytime somebody waits till, till a woman's 18, legal. it's like, how long did you like her? How many Man, years were you looking, that's you weirdo? So weird, bro. I um I've been playing the lottery lately. I'm not gonna lie to you guys. Okay? Interesting. Um, can't win if you don't play. I would love to spend the latter half of my life yeah. traveling. Mm-hmm. I would have a permanent world mailing address. I don't know where I would go first or spend the most time outside of like Jamaica, obviously. But uh, depending on what I win, how much I win, I wouldn't mind spending like maybe close to a month at sea. On some like yacht type shit or at least a boat type shit. Would you shit. live on a cruise ship? People are doing that now. No, 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 not that. Something with uh something I don't know, just like eating like real seafood, right? And I know we kind of talked about that last week, but yeah. you know, I wanna I wanna I wanna fish for myself and and just like that. I don't know, just not be accessible for like that amount of time. You wanna live off live off the like grow your own food and yeah, but I would do that like I would do that in the states. Like I would I, like I still me even if we don't win a lottery, we plan to like buy some land in maybe like Texas or Georgia, nice. and oh, sure you know like, happening, yeah. cultivate all that shit ourselves. Have our own vegetation, have some animals and shit like that. Uh, a post office and uh, yeah, like you know, get enough land and just make some houses off of out of the uh, the um, what are those shipping containers? 
But the, oh, the lottery yeah. shit would just be, it would just be dope to do. Now, the fear I have is winning the lottery and not having the ambition and initiative to still be creative. Because you could look at it one or two ways. You could look at it like, now I have the freedom and the money and the time to do any and everything I want to do. Mm-hmm. Or you can be like, nigga, I've been working my whole life. I'm about to take a break. If they miss me on the internet, I'll be back whenever the fuck I'm back. I don't care. Right. And I'm scared of the latter being more true because I've I've had to work for so long. Now I'm sure I'll still be creative, but I would probably dive deeper into the DJ and shit. And if I ever did anything musically, I probably would just hide my identity. I don't know if I would want people to know. Okay. I think that's that's important. Now, Pat, you go. No, go ahead. I mean, um, given the person I know who you are to here, I don't think that would be that much of a danger because you you create so much and it's so much of a part of who you are that yeah. I think you you would maybe would take a year off and then you'd be like, I gotta I gotta go make something. Mm-hmm. And this would allow you to you don't have to ask anyone to help you make something. You could make whatever you want yeah. and you can show it to whoever you want because you don't gotta look for a distribution and all yeah. that because you'd have the money to do it. True. It's almost like um, I I personally feel like strong work ethic. It, it's it's not we say it's so hard to turn off. I don't think you can. That's yeah. why people who were hardworking their whole life they retire and then they come they just go right back to it because they're yeah. like the idea of retiring and resting is is cool, but when it act, when it actually happens, I don't think that they can they can do it. Yeah. It's just a part of them. I have a question though because you do a lot of stuff. Do you think you can separate everything you do into, I think I just do this for money and I have to do this? Like the stuff that you're like, okay, being on stage, it didn't matter if I was rich or if mm-hmm. I'm not doing that to be rich. I have to do it. Yeah. And then like other stuff like content or this or that. Like, do you know which one is which? I do. But it doesn't necessarily ring true right now. Because I would do comedy for free. If I had the freedom of, you know, not worrying about any financial woes, mm-hmm. I would still want to be great at it. I would still want to entertain people. I think that the smiles and laughter is priceless and it's the cheapest form of healing. However, I do it now because I have to. That's how I get paid. If I didn't have to work to get people at shows, like if I could just say, hey, I got a show here and I knew people were going to come, I would not be on social media as much. Okay. I loathe promoting yeah. it makes comedy not fun it I makes it a job that's when it feels the most like work that's when it feels the, the least rewarding is when you have to promote when i have to be on social media when i feel like i have to post every day to stay visible because i know a good percentage of my followers are not seeing my posts so i post every day in hopes that 10 to 20 to 30 more people will see this 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 and interact with it because I feel like they haven't been seeing it. Just based off of my likes and my views, I know everybody is not seeing my content. Right. So I would not, I would, I would not do social media as much. So lottery, you hit the lottery today. Mm-hmm. The first thing you cutting back is social media. Um. No. Yes and no. Yes, that would probably be the very first thing I would cut back as much. Yeah. Um. And. I wouldn't probably throw the parties I, I I throw. I would be way more exclusive. It would be way more secluded. Mm-hmm. Um, it would be it would be an event when I step out mm-hmm. because I wouldn't I wouldn't be as accessible as I am now. I feel like you'd have to make yourself less accessible just because people winning the lottery. You don't yeah. want a whole lot. Of people Even if knowing. you don't tell people, it's yeah. gonna be it's gonna be it's a gonna little be signs. Yeah. Your life gonna change. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Because I'm gonna go to the mall. I'm gonna have two cars. I'm like ah, I want to drive home in this. Hilarious! Ah, ah, Just ah, like, hey, ah, assistant, ah, drive this to the mall and Uber back. I want to, <laughs> I want to drive there and switch cars. I won't say it, but there will be signs, bitch. I love, I love those memes. It'd be like a a, a T-bone steak in ramen noodles. <laughs> um, but no, I would, I would love to. Um, I don't know, man. Like, I would, I would, I would even consider adopting a kid as much as I hate kids or not, not hate. I from just, baby? Maybe from like three, three, four. Um, just to give that child an opportunity to have me around full time because I wasn't able to do that with the guy. I did as much as I could with the kid. Mm-hmm. But like, you know, there are enough kids that need to be adopted without us trying to have more. Plus, I can't have yeah. no kids anyway. So I would maybe That's potentially a drop a kid, adopt a kid or two. 
Uh, maybe, you know, get a house with uh, hardwood floors so maybe we can get a dog, another dog or something like that. I would want to experience life from a place of giving more love. I was about to say, yeah, a lot of your stuff is is uh, given more. <laughs> yeah, I would want to I would want to live more positively in, in more of a positive manner because everything I've done up until this point had been for survival and you know uh, acceptance and proving worth and that I'm not crazy chasing this idea. So, but I think I would feel unfulfilled if I didn't do certain things. If I didn't get certain go- certain goals accomplished, like landing a movie, uh, landing a hit TV role. Uh, getting at least one mainstream special, uh, I would, I would, I would feel unfulfilled regardless of if I had a hundred million. So acting in, in stand up, are you're doing it even if you win the lottery? Yeah, yeah, I would definitely do that. Absolutely, I, entertaining people in general is just something that I love to do, and I want to do it through in, acting and comedy. But I would do it through DJing too. I would mm-hmm. do it through music. Like music is, I fucking love music, bro. Like I love music the way Eddie and all the people love comedy. And for me, comedy, I feel like. Maybe I don't love that as much as music, only because I know that that's in good hands. Other people have it, and I don't necessarily desire to be the best amongst my peers. I desire to be the best that I can be. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, so that's for me, it's different. Like, I'm going to continue to get better at that because I'm going to continue to live life, and these stories are going to be more personal to me. And they're, because they're more personal, I feel like they're going to resonate with the you know the supporters more. Uh, but with, with music, like you can touch so many people with a comedy, you can too. But if they don't speak English, you know, oh, there's, yeah. a, there's a language barrier. But with music, they don't have to speak that language to right. understand that beat, to feel that energy, to know that you are slowly building up this cadence and this BPM to get to this point where we all throw our hands up at the middle of the night, hmm. or you have a playlist and this beat selection that just just fucking touches my soul when this 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 saxophone comes on and you feel all, all the passion that that player is putting in it or the bass when they go do 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 and you like oh that motherfucker killed that yeah. you don't have to speak english or whatever the fuck language that that song might be in to to for that to resonate and move you so music i feel like is one of the most That's intimate true. and soul capturing Forms of entertainment and art that we have to share with each other, and that shit just that shit get me, bro. That's a great point. It is it is way more universal. Yeah, comedy. Even if you speak English, the cultural difference from somebody around the, uh, across the world. Like, have you ever seen like? Sometimes I watch like a, a, a comic from like Britain or something. I'm like, mm-hmm. I don't know what the I don't know what the hell they're talking about, bro, even though they're speaking English. Tony but had music. a funny DMV joke. He took that shit to. We were in. What was it about? Uh, you know, just like how they always angry in there, how slow it is, how the energy's bad. Mm-hmm. And he did it in Birmingham, Birmingham, England. And they don't have a DMV. And their experience is completely different. So he's hitting the jokes like boom, boom. And they're just like. Did he notice on yes. stage? Like, oh, switched. y'all don't have yeah. a DMV. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. he asked, he's like, wait, do y'all have a DMV? Y'all got a... And it's like, no, no, no. I'm like, oh, I don't even, you, don't, you haven't known they what I was talking about no... for five minutes. <laughs> 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 I have no recollection of what he's talking about. No idea. That's crazy. So, like, but with music, like, you don't have to know how to sing. You don't know how to, know how to play that instrument to have an appreciation for how well mm-hmm. the actual player is doing it. So. Yeah. That's that's a great point. Because there's some things, like, I'd be feeling bad for skateboarders. Because, like, you, if you're not into skateboarding, it's hard, like, to appreciate everything that they're doing mm. unless they do, like, a million flips. Yeah. So it seems like the biggest fans of skateboarders are skateboarders. <laughs> yeah. But for music and comedy and stuff like that, you could not be skilled at that at all and still be, like, a complete huge fan. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's crazy. I agree. Today's episode is brought to you by BetterHelp. A common misconception about relationships is that they have to be easy to work. I myself am completely guilty of this. I grew up thinking, especially with intimate relationships, if it wasn't easy and fun all the time, then it wasn't worth it. If there was any arguments or tension, then I would run away from it. It wasn't until I was older that I realized that that was something with me and I had to work on it. And through working on this, I learned that sometimes the best relationships happen when both people are working on themselves. Now therapy can be a place where you can work through the challenges that you face in all your relationships, whether it be friends, family, loved ones, anyone. It can be really helpful for learning positive coping skills 
and how to set healthy boundaries. It can empower you to be the best version of yourself. And therapy is not just for people who have experienced a major trauma. It can benefit anybody. So if you're thinking of trying therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online and it's designed to be completely flexible to your schedule. All you have to do is fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and you can switch therapists at any time for no additional charge. So become your own soulmate, whether you're looking for one or not. Visit betterhelp.com slash DIYS to get 10% off of your first month. There's no reason not to try. That's betterhelp, hel pcom slash DIYS. Go ahead and get you 10% off your first month. Tell them we sent you. All right, what's on the docket? Let's go. What's on the docket? We got... 13 year olds securing huge jobs. We got airplanes blowing up mid flight. Wait, was that the airplane or was that the spirit airplane with the door? So it was Alaska, it was Alaska and, and United. And United oh, States shit. Now. Like, flying is becoming, we might as well start there. So okay. flying is becoming scary as hell. Alaska Airlines, which is an airline I've had problems with multiple <laughs> times. Um, the plane door plug flew off mid-flight. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And there's video of it. I can't believe how calm everybody is. Everybody's just sitting in silence, just <laughs> chilling. Um, and they got a refund. It says that they're also mm -hmm. getting a 1.5K um to every passenger, but 177 people, they were aboard a Boeing 737 MAX when a piece of the plane's door blew out near the back of the plane. Passengers captured the scene in videos all across social media, many of which show a huge hole inside of the plane and the oxygen masks being deployed. I've never seen that, even in big turbulence. I've never seen the masks yeah, you never seen it come, come down. down. Uh, and I can't even imagine, because I feel like even if you fly all the time, there's, I'd be surprised if anyone in here has had a full flight where they didn't even think of something bad happening. <laughs> oh, yeah. You know, between the takeoff, between the turbulence where everything's shaking, the the, the land, I, I'd be thinking like three or four times a flight, like, dang, what if this just blew up? What if Man, it just crashed? What unless if... I'm asleep, I'm always thinking about it. It's scary. So the fact that that happened and everybody was just like, okay. We're 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 good. <laughs> and then uh, not too long after, United Airlines uh, they found loose bolts on the door plugs of several 737s. Uh, right after, I guess the Alaskan Airlines made them start checking for safety. You know what? Maybe we should uh, look into this shit. <laughs> loose bolts on the door plugs uh, in on several planes, and it basically could have done the exact same thing mm -hmm. as Alaska. So now. Now that I'm getting on a flight, uh, now now when I'm getting on flights, I'm even more scared because even though you have those thoughts of something wrong happening, you you always lean into the stats. Like, mm -hmm. it's safer to fly than it is to drive. <laughs> uh, when's the last time something happened? Now we know that not only did a door blow off, but other airlines are finding that their shit is not really as put together. And now I'm terrified. Well, I mean, that's, that is basically been the history of things being fixed or improved upon. Just it doesn't typically happen until something bullshit. horrible happens. Yeah, like the whole thing with the black box on planes, it was just was like, these fucking planes keep crashing. We gotta figure out what the <laughs> fuck is going on <laughs> some in the moments be before. <laughs> and then they made the black box, but like seat belts in planes, seat belts on cars, all of that shit came from horrible shit happening. And they were like, maybe we should maybe we should look into this. That's insane for for Flights, like I've had, I've had flights that I fully boarded, and then when it seems like we're about to take off, they're like, "Uh, guys, we're gonna have to exit mm, the plane yep. because the the plane needs gas." Did we check that before? What? <laughs> you know what? That's happened sometimes when they've uh, sat on a tarmac for too long. So whether yeah. it was like with them onboarding or deboarding, or whether it's like waiting for you guys the, the next next batch of people to take off, because that happened to me when I was going to Sacramento. We sat on a tarmac for so long, we had to double back and refuel because we wouldn't have had enough money to make it to Sacramento from L.A. Wait, so you took off? 
No, no, no we were just sitting on the tarmac. Yeah. We were just uh, there. And they were waiting to get clearance to take off, but they said that uh, the wow. crowds or the routes were so crowded that we couldn't take off. So we sat on the tarmac probably an hour and 20 minutes. Oh, that's and terrible. then we had to go back and refuel. But then we refueled. Ugh. When we refueled line. it, we were so heavy, we couldn't take our original route because that original route was for a certain altitude and the plane would have been too heavy to reach that altitude. So they had to reroute us, which took another 30 minutes to find us a course to go with that altitude because of the weight of the plane. That's dangerous. So, so airlines are just like us. They don't fill it up. Why, why not just fill up the tank? They, they're fit. filling up just like we need about this much to get there. So this was Southwest. So Southwest does it by uh they do low bearing trips, I think what it is. Yeah, so it's they by the weight and distance. Um they pick up people from like Dallas, right? And they'll go from Dallas to San Diego and then San Diego to LAX and LAX to Sacramento or Vegas. Right. That's why the layovers sometimes places, feel so weird. Yeah. And that's why you also have people who are already on the plane when you get on the plane because they're going to the next the next day. low. Yeah. So most of them go to destination to back. So they'll go Dallas to L.A., L.A. back to Dallas. Right. That's how most of It's only a few that do what, what uh, Southwest <laughs> does. And it just makes it weird because, the you know, the lighter the plane is, the higher they can fly it and get better courses or um, routes. But, I didn't know that. bro, it's, it's, that, that was a horrible day. That sounds like you paid for somebody forgetting something. <laughs> That's what I like, like, like sitting on the tarmac that long and then having to regas. It sounds like you, like a bunch of people's days were ruined because something wasn't checked. Man, that was a horrible flight. Finally, get to goddamn Sacramento, and then the luggage uh, conveyor belt breaks. So about about six bags come out, and then that shit shuts down. Damn. After going through all of that foolishness with the plane shit, right? It was, oh, well. Damn. And that was a day I missed my first flight because I thought my flight was at a different time. So I, I had to pay for another flight. The other flight was a flight that we sat on the tarmac for. I was like, I'm over this weekend. Jesus. It was trash. I hate airlines. The whole process. Like, I feel like Delta is just like the best of all the monsters. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. it's, still, it's still rough, but I just flew... An airline I've never heard of. It was called, it had a sun on it. What the hell was it called? Allegiant? It sounded like medicine. Mm. Yeah, I think I it, it, yeah, it, Allegiant. They're regional, right? Yeah, I think uh, maybe. I've, I've heard of Allegiant, though. You've heard of Allegiant? Yeah. There's so much shit I don't know. Okay. Did y'all hear about the iPhone that fell out of the Alaskan airline? Yeah, supposedly, and it was okay. <laughs> There's an iPhone that fell out of the plane, out of that hole in the plane, 16,000 feet, and it still worked. So this is kind of like how the Stanley Cups blew up. <laughs> something something survived a tragedy, and now that was the best marketing ever. Mm. It said, found an iPhone on the side of the road, still in airplane mode, with half a battery, and open to a baggage claim for Alaska Airlines. Shit. Must have landed on the titanium side, so. And not cracked? This sounds like an Apple campaign. Because <laughs> it was in airplane mode, and it was still open to a baggage claim for it. Well, I mean, I guess that, that makes sense, but still, like, who... Wait, if it was still open, that part sounds fishy because they lock pretty quickly. It, it didn't yeah. lock, and yeah. the, the screen that it was on was like, oh, this must have been from the Alaska. The like, <laughs> yeah. Convenient. Super planted. Yeah, industry plants. Ooh, and it Not says there us. was a broken off charger plug still inside it. Damn. So, like, the We need thing... the person whose phone it was to confirm that their phone flew out the window. Imagine being the person in that seat right when the door flew off of. Right. I mean, that's why, that's why I was so surprised at the video of them all calm. Yeah. Because I've heard people start crying when there was too much turbulence. Mm -hmm. So the fact that, like, you're seeing <laughs> maybe Maybe that was after they, they, they calmed maybe down. To, yeah, post. Yeah. Nobody had time to film the initial reaction. And then after, they were like, oh, this happened. Oh, so people f didn't film the good part? Yeah. That was would y'all calm down? Out. Would y'all calm down at some point? I mean, like, I feel like I would. I mean, a six hour play. Yeah. <laughs> like, you cry for yeah. six hours is wild as hell. <laughs> you gonna you, get dehydrated. Wouldn't you get more money for being closer to the hole? I feel like it'd be, yeah, proximity, trauma. Yeah, I feel like Yeah, I, like, I was thinking that that. When I saw it, when I, when I read that they were going to award all the passengers mm -hmm. this amount of money, I was like, The people but, in first class weren't affected. Yeah. <laughs> 
They're like, probably just like, sounds pretty windy back there. <laughs> Close those curtains. <laughs> you think that the the, the flight <coughs> attendants still served? <laughs> no. They you have don't to think be so? Still I, think held you ha- I think you got to sit down. You can't you get out of your seat. You got to sit down, bro. Ain't no walking when that shit going on. What better time would you want some orange, <laughs> orange juice? <laughs> What is wrong with you? I'm fucking I mean, I, out. Could, I could see people needing a drink. Um, yeah, or nah, some snacks. Man. Listen, I'll get that drink when we on the ground, the baby. Snacks are flying out the window. <laughs> Hell no, man. That shit's crazy. I couldn't. We would have had to make an emergency landing in the fucking field. I don't give a fuck about I the airport. I hope they did. I think they landed at the airport, bro. Yeah, no, but I'm, they, they didn't. They didn't. Uh... Oh, it said not even 20 minutes into the flight this Oof. happened. I had the bus of you. They say the most dangerous parts for planes are like take off, take off and landing, or like mm. right before it lands and like right before you take off. What about all that time in the air? So planes are built to fly. So if you're the safest when yeah. the plane is in the air flying. When it's in the air, it's basically flying itself. You're the most vulnerable landing and taking off because like planes aren't built to drive. So like the wheels are so tiny and all that. Like it's not that's not what they're prepped for. Whereas like a car is prepped for driving on land. So yeah. like that makes the most sense. Planes are made for flying, so they're the safest when they're flying. Mm. Yeah. Okay. I could see that. I didn't start getting really comfortable until I started. Being on helicopters more, cause like helicopters, those are, are the most. They're affected by wind so much mm. that random breeze just will make the whole thing shake, especially the small ones. But Ooh. I didn't calm down until a pilot told me that if everything goes wrong in a plane or a helicopter, they can still glide down. Yeah, yeah. I didn't know that for a helicopter, but planes, even if both engines them, yeah. fail, you can ride the air currents down smoothly and i just assumed that if something went wrong you just nose no yeah. because it's well it's aerodynamic it's like a paper airplane mm. you throw it it'll it'll land mm-hmm. uh planes is the exact same thing they're not and because there's so much momentum you have all of that kinetic energy you're gonna ride out as mm. much as you have it's not gonna just but you ever seen a pl- plane like a paper airplane like go up and then like <laughs> yeah because if it pl- so if a plane if a plane just decided, decided to suddenly go vertical, it would fall back on itself and it would tank, like you're saying. But if it's staying in the, the position it's supposed to be in flying, it's going to use, it, that's all physics, it's going to ride itself out yeah. until it lands. It's if you're making like weird maneuvers, like if the pilot suddenly like jerked it and it turned, then you're, then you're the most in danger, as in it would. But just cause in issues. terms of like engine and gas and all that stuff, if all that failed, you wouldn't as long as you're not taking a making a weird move and make trying to do a trick in the air. No, you'll, you'll be able to ride that down. You'll, you'll ride it down. It's That's gonna comforting. be it's gonna be hard as fuck to like steer it. Yeah, to land because, it because it's all um, you. The mechanics are out and like that helps with that. So it's like. But it's like trying the, to trying to the land the brick. Up, that's how they steer. That's yeah. all the steering that the pilot's doing is when those flaps are moving. Fla- that's how you exactly, turn. Exactly. That's how you turn. Mm-hmm. So they're not going like this. No, they're they're do- <laughs> so when they do that, it they moves. Were. When they're doing when they do that, it moves the wings. Oh. That's how they turn planes in that. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. And the back one keeps it straight. Yeah, the tail keeps it level. Got yeah. it. Have y'all ever had any inclination to be a pilot? Have you ever been on the website struggling to get a seat? You couldn't find any deals. You didn't even know how good the seats were. Last time I bought a ticket, I was sitting with the hot dog cart outside. Basically, we should not have to worry when we're buying tickets for our big event. Game Time is the fast and easy way to buy tickets for all the music, sports, and comedy events near you. With killer deals, all-in prices, they even show you the views from your seat. Have you seen those yet? I don't know why everybody isn't doing this. Game Time takes the guesswork out of buying tickets. All you gotta do is browse through the Game Time app. I got it open right now. Look at this. I'm looking at last minute tickets. They got flash deals, zone deals, easy to find and buy tickets. Look at this. Views from every seat in the venue, lowest price guarantees, even event cancellation protection. You don't even have to go. Game Time is the only ticketing app that gives you complete peace of mind during your purchase. Buy tickets in seconds with just two taps. Game Time has deals on the tickets all the way until the start of the event. And get this, there's deals even up until an hour after the event starts. So even if you late, you still save money. And the Game Time guarantee is that you will always get the best price. And they're so sure of that, if you find that somebody paid less in the same row and section as you, Game Time will credit you back. 110% of the difference. Now that's how you know they sure. 
So take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. So download the Game Time app, create an account, and then use the code DIYS to get $20 off your first purchase. We, we throw in 20 at you, why wouldn't you? Again, create an account, then redeem the code DIYS to get you $20 off. So download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price, guaranteed. I've thought flying a plane probably is a really cool experience. Not like a giant like airline, but like a smaller a personal plane one? feels like it would be a cool experience. Mm. But besides that, no, never have desire. Yeah. I feel like I want to. I want to be a helicopter pilot. That seems very scary. Like I feel like you got to be thinking about a lot of things. Plus, just the way helicopters are set up, just like I feel like that shouldn't be flying. <laughs> like I feel like we've moved on from helicopters from being like a. What do you mean? There's like I feel like they're the most common thing to crash. Even the most expert pilots. There's always like like the Navy SEALs always a helicopter crash for one of their missions that they gotta blow up the helicopter afterwards. Yeah. Why do they have to blow it up after? So the enemy doesn't get the specs to a special helicopter and can use it against us. Mm. That's why they have to destroy. They could find a helicopter and then learn how to build it. Yeah, they can dismantle it, figure out how it's built. Reverse engineer it. Or use it as is. Hmm. Like you have to destroy it. Uh, that's how things work with that. Okay. Well, never mind. <laughs> I don't think I, I don't think I want to do it anymore. A helicopter. <laughs> just two big propellers or just one big propeller, just like that's the only thing keeping you up. I just it doesn't yeah. have a little propeller in the back. Especially you know? the tiny janky ones that have no yeah. doors and it's just a glass bubble. I'm like, mm, gotta uh, pass. What if it, the propeller stops spinning and <laughs> in movies they're always the helicopter crash. starts spinning as fast as the propeller. Oh shit. <laughs> that is worst case scenario. I have. I, they did say that if the propeller stopped, you could still glide, but I don't. I don't see how that's I possible. Know how I don't that works. know how without wings you can glide, but maybe. Uh, yeah. Again, if you're moving Damn. fast enough forward with, if you have the momentum, mm -hmm. you can probably glide yourself down. But that's what it takes. It takes having the speed to land like yourself, like a projectile. But they don't even have wheels. So however, no. would, however fast you're going, you got to just like. <laughs> yeah. As opposed to like landing and yeah. sliding. It's like a nerf ball with the little tail on it, little tail on the yeah. thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So it it, it have cool. a, a decent amount, but like yeah, with the turning it's gonna be a rough like stop. gliding. Yeah, that's eek. I'm so I'm eek. so scared. That like stuff like that makes the experience not even worth it. Like um there was that lady who uh whose parachute failed and the she had somebody who passed out. Mm -hmm. On attached to her and she still lived somehow but it's like uh, adrenaline junkie is just like like I was just watching a, um, a documentary about the people who free climb you yeah. know the people on, yeah, on mountains and those it's like you could just crazy. you could just hook yourself up and get the <laughs> but I don't know it's like something about maybe I'll die flirting with death man and then and then they get a documentary because then they do die mm -hmm. <laughs> yes yeah. mm -hmm. so I just I don't I don't I like life way too much. They want to be mort mortars, maybe. I, I don't know. I, I I have no idea what the fascination. I think part of it is. is knowing in death they're going to be remembered because they were doing it without, and it, like it was, mm. it was either they were going to live or die in the sense where it's like, oh, the equipment didn't fail. It was like just they were just doing it. Their like that. grit. Keeping Which is alive. crazy because you run the risk of people saying, "Well, that was dumb." Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have that every everything. <laughs> I wonder if those people are more likely to let their intrusive thoughts win. Because it seems like that's what that lifestyle is. It's like, yeah, you got to keep doing stuff to keep the intrusive thoughts. What if I did this almost? without the safety? <laughs> it's like this thing has been keeping me safe my whole life. What if I did it without? I'm or done the, with oh, that. the worst ones is um, that's actually what this documentary was more about. She did the free climbing, but the reason why she did all that climbing was to do the tightrope uh, across two canyons. So she'll just, uh, she didn't even have a stick. She just was sticking out there <laughs> on a rope. And uh, she lived, but it was just like, it was televised, and people were like, dang, that's crazy. And that's about it. That's about it. That's about it. They can say they saw somebody do it, but they're not going to remember, most likely. So I'm not a, never been an adrenaline junkie. I'm Because also, like, how do you make money off of that? Like, I feel like your insurance Maybe is Red be Bull? crazy. Red Bull. Yeah. 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 You got to talk to Red Bull. <laughs> Guinness World Records and Red Bull is, is about the only thing. I feel bad for the people whose whole life is like, Guinness, I'm going to beat this record, I'm going to beat this record, I'm going to beat this record. And then somebody beats the record right before they do, and now they're like out of reach. Sheesh. 
Because <laughs> there are some people that are just like, because Guinness covers everything. It'll be like a thousand quarters in my mouth. Guinness, give me the re- reward. And it's like, okay. Like who sat down and was like, what hasn't been broken yet? And then somebody was like, 2,000. You're like, shit, that was my whole thing. <laughs> Sponsorship's my gone. Whole swag. <laughs> that was my whole thing. They just rip your Ooh. page out. <laughs> That sucks, man. If y'all could go for one Guinness record, what would it be? It would have to be something that's also cool without Guinness. Like how Drake broke the Guinness World Record for like record sold. Yeah. Mm. Like that's fully aligns with what he's trying to do. <laughs> oh, shit. Most money made doing fun stuff. Have been broken. Who's who, who's the holder of that? It depends on what fun stuff is. Elon Musk. No, yeah, he, he, doesn't, he doesn't be having. He fun. doesn't tell me he has much fun. Yeah. yeah, he says he has access to fun stuff. I feel like even when he does it, he's just like, mm. good times. No, <laughs> I probably. I mean, initially I thought something like with with like eating pizza or some shit like that. But then why initially? I thought about eating, but I'm like that physically feels like it would hurt. Yeah, and, and you, you have to train to do it, yeah. so you're just yeah. gonna ruin your health. And I know people that I know there are people that will like destroy that shit way more than me. I like I won't be even yeah. I won't even have the title for like a day before somebody destroys That's it. That's the worst part. I wonder what the Guinness World Record for Most shortest records broken. No, for shortest time holding a Guinness World Record. That's, so like yeah. if somebody was like finally a thousand quarters and somebody was like a thousand and one. You're like, you <laughs> bitch. <laughs> and then you win a record for that. That'd be crazy. <laughs> Guinness World Record. Let's do they see. pay? I don't. I don't think so. It's just a. So. It's just a recognition, yeah. right? Just do it. Some people, man. Shortest um, time holding a record. I hope it doesn't actually pull up like somebody holding a record, like a forty. Sure, like literally holding. Right. Let's see. Uh, meet the shortest woman, no, uh, tallest man, shortest woman, 10th thing, time, time records. There's so many records. That's oh, crazy no, there's that's, a record for anything. I don't think that's gonna be Being the record. shortest and tallest isn't fair because, like, that's all Yeah, genetics. that's just how you you're are. Like, mm. But, I mean, if you hold on to that, you're like, nobody's taller than me. And somebody walks in, you're like, ah, shit, that was my whole personality. <laughs> <laughs> I have to look this All you have up. to do is read the book and then find out what hasn't even had a record set, right. and then you could just do it easily. I wonder if there's <laughs> the longest poop. I could be in the bathroom forever. If I had no work to do, bitch, I live in It's there. probably biggest poop. Because you could just sit there on the toilet. But yeah, that one. Who, I wouldn't want to be products. the Guinness guy to go check that out. Like, yeah. hey, you gotta... <laughs> right, like that <laughs> South Park episode? <laughs> Where he did, did the giant 10-foot tall poop. He was like, oh, hot, 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 hot. <laughs> Hot, 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 hot. And then it ended up being Bono. It was crazy. Oh, that sucks. This episode is brought to you by Blue Chew. Now, let's just talk about sex for a second, all right? Guys, do y'all remember when y'all were just always ready to go, just at the slightest breeze? If a woman looked at you the right way, you were just ready. You were just there. Well, now you can increase your performance and get that extra confidence you want in bed. So listen closely. Get, get, come here. BlueChew.com. Now, BlueChew is a unique online service that delivers the same active ingredients as Viagra and Cialis, but in chewable tablets and at a fraction of the cost. You can take them anytime, day or night. That way you can plan ahead and be ready whenever the opportunity arises. Now, the process is simple. Just go to BlueChew.com, consult with one of their licensed medical providers, and once you're approved, you'll receive your prescription within days. And the best part? It's all done online. So no visits to the doctor's office, no awkward conversations, and no waiting in line at the pharmacy. Blue Chew's tablets are made right here in the USA and they are shipped right to your door. And not only that, it's in a discreet package. Now I don't mean to toot my own horn, but ever since I've been signed up at Blue Chew, I've been leaving a lot of lasting impressions. There's nothing sexier than confidence and Blue Chew can help give you the confidence where it counts. So overall, Blue Chew just wants to help you have better sex. Discover your options at BlueChew.com. Chew it and do it. And we've got a special deal for our listeners. Try Blue Chew for free when you use our promo code at checkout. Just use our code DIYS and all you have to do is pay for the $5 shipping. That's it. That's BlueChew.com promo code DIYS for your first month 
free. All you have to do is pay the $5 shipping. Visit BlueChew.com for more details and important safety information. And we'd like to thank BlueChew for sponsoring this podcast. All right. I got uh, the, the, the oldest story. Um, well, a story that makes you feel old. This hit the news. Top 20 slang terms used last year by teens. Y'all wanna uh, y'all ready to date yeah, yourself? Yeah, let's just go with this shit. All right. I wanna see if how 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 hip we are. You guys can play too. Number one, sus. Mm, yeah. We all know sus, right? Mm-hmm. Suspect. Or suspicious. I never knew which one it actually was. Bet. Okay, easy. Yeet. What is bet again? I, forget, I always forget what B E T B E T stands for. It's uh, oh, bet, bet. like bet. It's that. not. A, it's not a uh, acronym. Oh, it's not one. Yes. No, no, no. Bet okay, is well just then. like for sure. Okay, that's what I. Yeah, the about. acronym is Black Entertainment Television. <laughs> but <laughs> B E T is just yes. like oh no, bet that yeah, for sure. It's like right you gonna on. be there at five? All right, bet. Me too. Mm-hmm. Yeet. That's to throw. That is a throw. Yeet. Yeeted. Salty. Oh, you mad? You big salty. We're still tapped in mm-hmm. so far. Cap. Ah, uh, liars! Everyone yeah, knows that's Cap. Fake. Yeah, he's story so, yeah. storyteller. Extra, too Doing much. Most, over and above. Bussin. That shit good. That yeah. shit fire. Slapping. Bougie. Man, get your Last booze year? ass out of here. That seems like it was a couple years ago. Um, sheesh. Yikes. That seems really old. Is that slang or is that just a ex- like expression? Sheesh. It's pro- I feel like it's got to be probably slang for some like old old term. It sounds like that. Like where did sheesh come from? It sounds <laughs> yeah, like a sheesh. Mm. Drip. Who? I feel like Put that's that on the way out. out. I feel like that's on the way out. Yeah. Oh yeah. All right, here's where it gets a. Uh... You, you, uh, you never know. Because <laughs> more than likely, if this was on the news, this was years ago, and what mm-hmm. teens are actually saying is way it's more not, crazy. Yeah, they are always a little bit late. Oof. Oof. Oof's been around for a bit. I, I feel like I've been using yeah. it for a while. I remember people using that in text messages. I was like, at first I was is like, what the fuck is, is this? Is that just like sheaf? Sheesh? Yeah. Oof is more like if someone's like said something that bad that happened to them that's not like oof. super, super bad, you're like, oof, that's, mm-hmm. that sucks. kind of. Like, okay, so it's with negative sheesh. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Finna. Finna was on that? Like, I'm finna. Going to. Wow. Shook. I've Should heard that. Shook. That's been around since Mob Deep, at mm-hmm. least. Simp. I feel like they had like a resurgence, but like simp. Yeah, is that a play on pimp or simple? Um, because it's the like opposite. Simp, no, of it's a, a play on a sympathy. Yeah. Sympathy. Whoa, like S Y M P. Yeah, like you're you you want people to show sympathy for you. Yeah, or you you simp know like that. the simp with the ladies is you care too much. That's yeah, but what you I, want that's... you want the sympathy. You mm-hmm. want them to feel bad for you. You want them to be like oh okay like I'll I'll say yes or I'll take care mm. of you like that's what you're, I always saw simp used for. like. When somebody's doing too much with the with the girls, like do being extra, like being extra <laughs> to get a girl, like oh you simping. Yeah. Mid definitely was at its yeah. biggest last yeah. year. I'm actually sick of it now. Hold this L. I honestly haven't heard that one a lot. What about I Y K Y K? If you know, you know. If you know, you know. Nice, y'all tapped in. If you, well, you know, in your 20s. you know. <laughs> MPC. I, like, I play I like, a character. I, I like that That's a cool one. Yeah. NPC or bot. Bot isn't mm-hmm. on this. Yeah. Vibe check. Okay. How you doing? How you feeling? Are we good? What we thinking, baby? It's usually used like, oh, the cop passed the vibe check. <laughs> and then finally, Stan. I stand this. I stand that. Mm-hmm. Fan of. I love this. What, like, I wasn't that what Eminem's I, song I, was is, called? Maybe. Yeah. But he na- he had them their name stand, but it was about a stand, yeah. right? Is that mm-hmm. where it comes from? Because I could mm-hmm. where's that derived from? That was a guy's name in the song. So maybe it was just Do you from think that. he invented it? I don't think he did. I think somebody probably took it. Someone might have taken it where and then just did used the it. The phrase stand come from. Oh, but you think it originated from that? So some mm-hmm. person heard the song and then used it. Oh, yeah, for, for Beyonce, that. I stand. Yeah. I feel wow. like they call somebody else stands. They yeah. they said somebody's name. Oh, they such and such stands. So check this out. The first of all, the term is a combination of fan and stalker. Mm. Okay, that makes okay. sense. I had no idea about that. And it was first coined in the year 2000 when Eminem dropped a twisted allegory in a song, Stan, about a man who pushed the edge when his idol wouldn't answer his fan mm. email. There you go. So. 2000, though. I feel like. 
Did Amanda. he make that name up because he, of Fan and st- Stalker? Or do you think he just named the person Stan because it <clears> rhymed <throat> with Fan and it was a rap song? I feel song? like he's smart enough to have thought, like, ooh, Stalker, Fan, yeah. Stan. Mm-hmm. I huh. mean, he rhymed Feels too orange much with door hinge. But I'm saying he's that <laughs> rapper that's like, Forjaba, Korjaba, Jorba, Jaborjaba. Yeah. So having him have a name that rhymes with fan is also very possible. But I could see Eminem having that. And type like of... it's more than a fan, it's like a stalker fan level. So like he was like, Stan, stalker, mm. fan, Stan. Like it... So you're thinking that he actually put together fan and stalker? I, it's, it's possible. I could see that. That sounds like some Eminem shit. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that sounds like Eminem shit. Okay. Well, I'm glad he got the he got the credit for that. Roses are red, violets are blue. Trim your balls and your date will thank us too. What's up, fellas? Valentine's Day is right around the corner and you got to get yourself situated in your nether regions. Manscaped is the remedy for what the love doctor ordered. His prescription, the all new Performance Package 5.0 Ultra, designed to elevate your grooming game and let you shine like the heartthrob that you are. Join the 10 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped with our new exclusive offer. Go to manscaped.com to get 20% off and free shipping with our code DIYS. Now Manscaped has helped me on many a Valentine's Day. Now last Valentine's Day, I used Manscaped to situate myself into like a little heart. I got I had a little heart bush, you know? And my date didn't come over, but Manscaped still hooked me up. Now speaking of Valentine's Day, let's just talk about the hero of Valentine's Day, the Lawn Mower 5.0 Ultra. Now this electric trimmer features skin safe technology. And as the name says, this is gonna protect your treasure and your booty. You don't want any grooming mishaps, right? It even comes with their brightest LED spotlight yet, and it's waterproof, so you can just be shaving in the shower. But that's not all. This package also features the Weed Whacker 2.0 Nose Trimmer. If you got all types of hairs hanging out your nose, Manscaped got you. You're also gonna get Manscaped's liquid formulations and two free goodies, the Shed Travel Bag and some draws. The Boxers 2.0, to be exact. Now, I actually love their boxers. I have them on now. And for a little happy ending, there's the Manscaped Refined Cologne. You trying to smell sexy, right? That's what I thought. And for the bearded kings, Manscaped got you guys covered too. Check out the Beard Hedger Pro Kit, designed to shape all that scruff effortlessly. So go to manscaped.com and use our code DIYS for 20% off plus free shipping. That's 20% off with free shipping using our code DIYS at manscaped.com. Because your grooming update awaits, ready to charm your Valentine's dates. That rhymed. Dido. It's a good song. It was kind of like cleaning out my closet where it was like a cool music video, but I would never just bump it in my car. Mm -hmm. Even if I could, it would all be great. (laughs) It's just like (laughs) them sad fucking epic ass songs never really, never was really bumped. Okay. You on Eminem's Um, wiki? I was just, I was looking to see, you know, what they were talking about with it, but I did find... Seven outrageous sex world records that will have you clutching your pearls. Oh, shit. World records? World records. It's about to hurt. Number one, oh, the shit. world's strongest vagina. Whoa. What is strong? Oh, one? did it like pull a car? Crash. Why this didn't get a Guinness certificate, nobody will ever understand. In 2009, Tatiana Kaz. Russian. Yep. Tatiana K. She lifted a stunning 31 pounds. With her lady bits, Tatiana inserted a wooden egg into her vagina, attached a 14-pound, I'm sorry, 31-pound dumbbell to the egg, and then lifted the weight clean off the floor. First of all, you just did pounds to kg that quick? I mean, it it had it in there. It had it in there. Yeah. Yeah, she so. lifted a, a kettlebell. What was the first thing she did? She put an egg in so there. So it's like no, no. something that she can put in there attached to a dumbbell. That's so it has the hook on it, probably. So the she egg probably had it. the hook on it. So it was probably like this. Oh. Oh, so, so she... it wasn't like attached to the lips. No, no yeah. No, no. She goes so she could no, yeah, it wasn't hanging on the skin. It's so yeah. she could clench and lift yeah. it up. She used the Kegels, the strength of the Kegels. That's um, pretty crazy. They should have hung a person from there. <laughs> <laughs> or a baby. 
<laughs> the world, I'm sorry, the record for the most queefs in the shortest time. Wow. <laughs> 93 wow. in 30 seconds. So that had to like, happen a lot for one person to be like, I think I, I I could win the world record for this. And someone had to like sit there and record it. With the stopwatch, like... Poof, poof, poof. If you've never heard of Howard Stern, it's time you get acquainted. In 2007, Howard Stern famously hosted a queefing championship. Enter Abby, a humble nurse and mother of two, starting to see the pattern here, who happens to have amazing vagina skills. Abby stripped her underwear, and after a little warm-up, she queefed her way up to the unofficial records books. What was the warm-up? She (laughs) ripped an astounding 93 queefs. And 30 seconds to take her reign as the queef queen, it beats burping the alphabet. Queef queen? Queef queen? Oh, I see why you have to say yeah. it twice. So that's like over three, that's about three a second. Yeah. About she was that. like. <laughs> I don't know why I'm doing triplets. Uh, uh, that was like the world's most. That room must have smelled record Ooh. breaking. The, <laughs> 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 the longest permanent erection. A 21 year old Iranian man fell on hard times when he decided to tattoo Boro, Boro B Salama, and M his girlfriend's initials into his penis, which resulted in a permanent semi erection. Medical experts hypothesize that the needle probably penetrated too deep and caused an atrial venous fistula. I've never seen any of those combinations of letters. Uh, A fistula is a connection between two organs or vessels, in in this case, an artery and a vein that normally don't connect. The unnamed man has now... Now, now has a permanent semi erection, so he always is on mid. So there's no time. It was just it, he just has it he just because has he's all hard still forever. Does. He's still going still so from until, a tat till he dies and someone ages past him with the same thing. He oh has wow, from a tattoo. Ow. I wonder if it can get fully hard because it sounds like it, it did some damage. Oh right, so we what if finish these last two, Real, oh. these last three? Come on, the longest time spent masturbating. No surprise that this record comes all the way from Japan. Oh shit. Okay. World champion masturbated, first of all, didn't know that was a thing. A world yeah, champion Yeah, is there a judge table? World champion masturbator Masanubu Sato holds the record for longest single masturbation session of an outrageous nine hours and 58 minutes back in 2011. We're pretty sure he'll hold on to that title for a long time. How hold much on lube to- was used. Does that mean you're actively trying to come that whole time, or can you just be like watching The Simpsons and fucking, you know? I don't know. I I I don't know the legality ramifications for that to be <laughs> reigned as a champion. But was he the world champion before that from something separate, or did I, this make him the world champion? I have no. I, I have no idea. World champion you finished the end. I, that's yeah. I don't know. <laughs> right what the after nine hours. Ah, and they're like. I feel like that arrive is like, finally! Yeah. It don't even feel good. Imagine the judge. They're just like, damn, I lost this bet. Now I got to watch this. I got to judge this competition. Bro. He's for nine hours watching this Japanese dude beat his I, shit. Even with lube, I can't see how your dick would not be raw. Oh, something yeah. like that. Chafed up. That's crazy. Pissed right. off at you. Largest penis in the world. Okay. Now, this might come as a surprise, but the longest penis... In, the, uh, in relation to body size belongs to an Argentinian blue bill duck with a remarkable 42.5 centimeter penis. A duck? It's not a human? No. But that's the largest penis in relation to body size. I thought turtles were bigger because they're like the same size as their body. I don't know. What was Which the animal? Pan- a duck? An Argentine blue bill duck. With a remarkable forty-two point five centimeter penis, expect that at which all. apparently evolved this way to have sex against the female's will. Wow. Okay, that whole sentence. Ducks are wow, crazy. Hell. Guinness is crazy yeah. for even including that. All right. However, when it comes to humans, there is a hot debate between New Yorker Jonah Falcon, who has a thirteen point five inch penis erect, New York. New York and Roberto Esquivel. Esquivel 
Cabrera's 19 inch member. Why the fuck is there even? Yeah, a debate? I was about to say 13 and 19. Is it because it's compared to size? Okay, Falcon claims that he is a record <laughs> holder because Robert can't use his member. Wait, what? Okay, so the New Yorker claims that he's a record holder because Robert can't use his member. Doctor suggests that if he gets circumcised, that he can have regular have a regular sex life. But the Mexican is refusing to give up his unofficial title, the biggest dick in the world. Wow. The fact that there's a second place, like, Wait, oh, he's he cheating. I'm the biggest dick. He can't use it. I because of the circumcision? Well, Too he much can't foreskin? use it because I guess nobody's going to let a 19-inch dick inside of them. But they're saying if he gets circumcised, that he could start having sex again. So well, the hoodie on that thing must be crazy. <sighs> got to wash it a lot. bed sheet. Ugh. He got Ugh. a clan hood on. <laughs> That's insane. 19 inches? Is that's gotta, it's longer than this left top right here. So, so what, this nigga's name Roberto Escobar. That sounds like who you don't want your girl around. Don't let Roberto your girl around Roberto Esquario me. Mendoza. Oh, uh, like, yeah. Here's another thing about this. This is from 2017. I haven't this got is, too many inch It's got to be a lot of weight. Like, when you just did that, I'm like, it probably sounds like that. That's... I mean, I don't know how long my forearm is, but that's half. That has to be more uncomfortable than anything else. Because okay. this is Roberto, this is Shona, this is the New York guy's like. Well, he can't even use his dick. That's what he looks like. He's saying, right "Wow, now. <laughs> I didn't expect." Okay, yeah, didn't... <laughs> they showed it. Oh, it's blurred, but he got. He the has tape a tape measure. measure. And it's like this. Yo, Roberto's a wild boy. Okay, if you want to. If you want to see Look him, at this just, dude. Yeah, he put his in the biker shorts. Way to go, Jonah. That uh, dude is. Whoa. <laughs> okay. That is. Roberto the looks wildest. like a donkey. Uh, his, the, all of his pictures are very donkey esque. For everybody who's not looking, he has the wildest. He's doing this <laughs> side profile. And it's just hanging like a, a windsock. And he has a colored like a, a a big carton of Neapolitan ice cream. Yeah, like how they um how they put pillars into the ocean and there's like little markers. You, saw, you can tell by the color. <laughs> it's like pink on the lo lowest marker, then it's white. It's crazy. There's like spray paint on it. Hey, this is all right. I think that's enough. I think we're done for the day. I don't think we need to explore go out this with the biggest dicks. <laughs> That's the that's the we lived up to the title of the podcast. All right, biggest uh, biggest members holders. of the world, nineteen inch member, largest Jesus world's largest Christ, members. Right, bro, that's that's crazy. Well, um, <laughs> what was that list called? Sexual rec world record holders. Uh, this one was called seven outrageous sex record uh, sex world records that will have you clutching your pearls. Sex world records. That's crazy. That was a good article. That was a good read, guys. That was a good read. <laughs> uh, back. Uh, yeah, that was. Wait, is this written today? No, it's just got today's date on it. This is back from twenty twenty one. By Lizzie Bliss. Oh, who wrote it? Right, Lizzie, Lizzie Bliss. Bliss. So, well, right. guys, thank you guys so much for tuning in to another episode. I appreciate you guys. I hope you had a fantastic time. Uh, thank you for pulling up. As always, I'm to hear more. I'm Patrick Cloud. Have a good week. We'll see you next time on another episode of Damn Internet, You Scary. Hey, hey. 19 inches. That is. That's uncomfortable. That's excessive.